Boston's biggest asset may be its old world charm, but that rich history puts us at a bit of a disadvantage when it comes to competing against fully modern cities. To help give Boston a leg up, state and city leaders announced today that public transit will run until 3 a.m. on weekends, starting later this month. We're going to try this on for a year. Uh, I'm confident it's going to be wildly successful. Um, but we're going to be gathering data as we go. A program like this happened a few years ago, and we didn't have the, the ridership we needed. And in order to, that we can ensure this, this stays and goes year-round, we need to help the MBTA by encouraging people to take public transportation. Well, Mayor Marty Walsh referenced the Night Owl bus service there, which was discontinued in 2005. Late night ridership was so low, the MBTA pegged the cost of shuttling each Night Owl passenger at $7.53, <laughs> compared to just $1.37 per daytime bus rider. So will late night tea service work better this time? Joining me to answer that, Jim Aloisi is a former state transportation secretary. Welcome back to Greater Boston, Jim. Thank you. You know about all things transportation. Is this going to make us, A, a world-class city, and B, are people going to use it? Well, I think we're already a world-class city, at least in our own minds. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is Boston becoming a 21st century city. And what I really think this is about uh, is it's a metaphor for moving away from our previous century, which was autocentric, mm -hmm. to the new day, which is technocentric. The reason why this is going to be so successful, I believe, and the reason why it's going to work is now people won't feel like they don't know when the evening schedule is. Everything is interactive. The smartphone will have apps that tell them scheduling. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think there's a demand for this. There's a demand for this both uh, from younger people who like to stay out late and enjoy the city. And there's also demand for this mm -hmm. uh, for lower income people who work late on weekends and need a place, a, a way to get home. All right. I want to bring Bob Lutz into the discussion. He's the president of the Massachusetts Restaurant Association and a big proponent of late night tea service. To Jim's point, though, Bob, who's this really going to service? Because I think there's some concern it's going to be the late night drinking crowds, students, you know, kids coming from B.C., B.U. Yeah, no, and uh, the reason that we've been such a big proponent and the reason we jumped on as a uh, sponsor on this event with uh, five other companies is because not only is this going to be a, a really big deal for our guests, it uh, certainly gives them a, a, a safe ride home, a less expensive ride home, so it pr uh, provides them with some more options. What we're really excited about for this is a really big deal for our employees. Uh, our employees work late night. They, they get off 11, 12, 1, 2, mm -hmm. and they had no safe ride home. They, they had no safe transportation home. And, and for our employees and our employers, they were reaching in their pockets a lot of time for very expensive cab fares. So this is going to be uh, truly a tremendous uh, uh, extension. Mm -hmm into letting them do more financially because they don't have to spend as much to get home. You know, one of our reporters last year um, did a piece uh, on, on the MBTA, and one of the things that one of the car workers told us is they need those late hours to do repair work on the cars and on the tracks. We don't have an extra set of tracks yeah. the way they do in New York City. So if you shut down one, you can operate the other. Is that accurate? Is that going to be a problem? It shouldn't be a problem if it's phased right. I think the T knows that it's going to have to hire more people and it's going to have to have uh, uh, more of a phased approach to this kind of repair work. But I think, you know, you gotta think, this is not just subway. This is also the bus system. Mm -hmm. And the bus system at night is in addition to public safety in the city. Additional eyes on the street are always a good thing in the city. So I'm seeing this as a very positive approach not just to improving people's personal mobility, but to improving mm. public safety on weekends. And the team will figure out how to make sure they're not going to run a system that's not well maintained. <laughs> we, we I, hope not. I hope not. Well, Bob, what's going to make the difference? You say your employees, you know, don't have, didn't have a safe way to get home. The night owl was in operation and nobody used it. So why will they use this? Yeah, well, I think, uh, honestly, I think the T is a better option for, for a lot of our employees. Uh, certainly that's going to be a stronger option now. Um, and I think, quite honestly, we're in a different world than we were the last time this came around. And there's uh, much more uh, um, uh, uh, excitement about mm -hmm. getting late night transportation into the restaurants uh, or getting late night transportation into Boston so that the restaurants and hotel workers and uh, bar workers um, will have this safe ride home. Mm -hmm. But I mean, people coming in from the suburbs for the most part yeah. are going to drive in. 
I mean, Probably they're not going to go park their car somewhere on a night like tonight, get out of the car, it's freezing cold, get into it. It's, it's not going to happen. No, That's not the crowd. It's responding to the reality of the moment. The moment. The city's a younger city. The mm -hmm. city's a city where people, younger people in particular, are driving less, taking mm -hmm. bicycles during better weather, using more public transportation. And I think it's, you're seeing, again, the intersection between good economic policy and social justice, because you're going to get both the people who are, want to be out enjoying the city late, and you're going to be getting people who need to use the tea mm -hmm. to get to and from work. It's a win for everybody, and I think it puts Boston a step ahead in making sure that we're, we are being mm -hmm. an innovative 21st century city. Okay, so they're going to have some sponsorship, like the Boston Globe and some others, yeah. but they're also tapping into everybody with this, you know, the increase in the registration fees. So people who drive are going to be paying for people who take the day. I've been supporting, <laughs> as you know, an increase in transportation revenue for a long time. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think it's enough new revenue. We still need to deal with an underfunded transportation system. Um, I'm personally interested to see how this corporate sponsorship mm -hmm. will do. Yeah. I don't think it's, it's only going to scratch the surface. But at the end of the day, we all in Massachusetts need to confront the reality of needing net new revenue to support a public transport system that is supporting mm -hmm. our retail and, and, other, and other services. All right, Bob, I've got to ask you about another announcement that came today, and that's the late night food truck service. How does your restaurant mm -hmm. association feel about that? Because it's not huge, but it's seven or eight trucks that are going to be in Copley Square. They, they're extending it to, I think, midnight. I don't know what the cutoff is now, but mm -hmm. how do you feel about it? Well, uh, I think it's something we have to evaluate, <laughs> sir, first of all. <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, here's, here's the fact. Uh, honestly, a lot of restaurants are closed by 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning. I've been complaining so, about that, too. So uh, <laughs> I think it, it actually provides uh, an opportunity for people, you know, and as Jim said, the, the workforce is really changing. Um, there's a lot of people that now all of a sudden don't work 9 to 5. They get out at 10 and 11 because they're dealing with uh, overseas business and they're part of that whole world. And so it gives them uh, an opportunity to stop and get a bite to eat, maybe stop at one of our restaurants and have a, uh, a cold beverage on the way home. And... Uh, and then get home safely. Could extend those bar hours too. All right, Jim Elwes. <laughs> I love this story. Thanks for coming in.